Across southern Europe, eyes are turning to the skies, looking for relief from a summer of scorching fires. From Italy, where several regions are ablaze, to the islands of Greece, enduring its worst heat wave in decades. In Turkey, residents use brushes and buckets to save their homes. Some are furious at the government's lack of preparation. They burned us. Our lungs are burning. This is our future, the future of our children. The response is not enough. It's insufficient. We need aerial support too. The state isn't helping. Without the villages, it would be worse. There aren't enough firefighters, planes or helicopters. More aerial support is on the way from the European Union. Volunteers have joined firefighters on the front line. They've managed to extinguish most of the fires on Turkey's southern coast. Where the flames have abated, residents are returning to ruins. We were panicked. We are happy to have survived. 10 to 15 of my trees have been burned. My properties are damaged. The home I live in is destroyed. There's nothing to do. All my possessions and money is gone. This year's fire season has been one of the most destructive on record, according to EU data. The extraordinary summer is testing the region's response to increasingly extreme conditions. And we've got team coverage for you on this with our DW correspondents on the ground in Turkey, Greece and Italy. Let's start with DW's Yulia Han, who joins us from Madavgat, one of the areas that has been badly affected by the wildfires in Turkey. Yulia, what's the situation with the fires there now? Well, the situation is devastating. Firefighters here in the region continue to battle the flames, flames that have left nothing but destruction. Just look around here. Blackened tree trunks, a gray landscape, and it looks like this in many places here in the area. We drove around in our car last night uh, and we saw several forest areas burning, horrible images. There was thick yellow smoke, which made it difficult to breathe. And now the Turkish authorities Authorities are trying to give the impression, it seems, that uh, the crisis is under control to a large extent, but that is not what we are witnessing here on the ground. According to data by the European Forest Information Service, there are three times as many fires than usual this year, and more than 100,000 hectares of forest land have burnt. The EU, Yulia, has promised Turkey water dropping planes and other forms of assistance. Uh, has that help arrived yet? Is it, is it making things better? Well, first of all, the Turkish government has come under huge criticism for not having been well equipped enough to put out the blazes when they erupted about a week ago. There were hardly any water dropping planes here in the country, although this region is a, a region prone to wildfires. This is something known. Now the number of firefighting planes has increased to 16 in total after help has arrived here in Turkey from countries like Russia and Azerbaijan in recent days. A plane has also arrived from Croatia yesterday and two more firefighting planes are expected to arrive from Spain today. This has been, as you mentioned, organized by the European Union. 5,000 firefighters, some 5,000 firefighters are currently trying to get the situation under control. But many people here in the area fear that this won't be enough. Yulia, thank you very much for now. That was our correspondent Yulia Han in Manavgat, Turkey. Well, temperatures are expected to peak at 45 degrees Celsius in some parts of Greece this week. The prime minister says the country is experiencing its worst heat wave since 1987. Greek authorities are advising households and businesses to conserve electricity, especially during afternoon and evening peak times. Let's cross over to Greece now. Uh, standing by is DW correspondent Florian Schmilz in Thessaloniki. Florian, it's been extremely hot in Greece. How are people there coping with it? 
the only way to cope with the heat is actually to avoid it. Of course, people here in Greece are used to high temperatures, especially in July and August. The peculiar, the out of the ordinary, is the duration of this heat wave peaking around today with a temperature of about 46 degrees, which is 114 degrees Fahrenheit. The government advises people to stay inside, to drink, uh, to, to, to drink lots of, of water and to use the air conditioning, not too excessively though, because you must understand that Greek buildings many times are not well insulated. I live on the top floor of my building and my apartment heats up to cozy 38 degrees um, without my air conditioning running 24 seven. You can imagine the drain on the already fragile Greek uh, uh, power a grid. It's especially bad here in the cities. We don't have a lot of trees, a lot of natural green. So um, uh, the municipalities keep buildings, public buildings open for people uh, who don't have access to climatized housing. But of course, whoever can escapes the cities to uh, uh, to go to the beach and cool off there. So people are trying to stay cool. Uh, to what extent is this extreme heat igniting a political discussion in Greece, Florian? Well, for the time being, people are very busy with uh, dealing with the heat, basically. But of course, we remember, uh, we see the, the wildfires and we remember, uh, remember the devastating fires in Mati in 2018, uh, where more than 100 people lost their lives. So uh, especially environmental organizations uh, say that they've been warning this and the previous governments to take better precautions. They say we need better investments uh, in heavy machinery, in uh, airplanes, in in uh, in, in trucks, in helicopters, uh, we need better uh, communication among authorities. And we also need to invest more into the maintenance of forests, which means to um, to pick up dry leaves, to, to pick up uh, dry woods, to uh, uh, prevent the fires from spreading so mm. quickly. And also, of course, to raise awareness, to make people um, understand that uh, barbecuing now uh, uh, um, and putting uh, cigarette bumps in, in the forest can actually cost lives. Florian, thank you very much. DW's Florian Schmitz there in Thessaloniki. Well, extreme weather has emergency services on high alert in Italy, too. Heavy rain and floods have hit the north of the country while wildfires are ravaging the south. The Italian fire services, they've carried out over 700 operations in the past 24 hours on wildfires burning across the central and southern parts of the country. Let's bring in Jacopo Lentini here. He's a journalist in Palermo. Jacopo, where, what is the situation like where you are in the south of the country? First of all, uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, now, let me give you some number. Uh, from the 15th of June until today, uh, firefighters have responded to over 37,000 uh, intervention. Uh, 8,000 of which just in Sicily, which is where I am. I'm in Palermo, the main city of uh, Sicily. Uh, now, situation is looking a little better than the weekend, where, as you said, uh, there were about 800 um, wildfires recorded all over the country. Now, uh, the city of Catania, um, in the eastern region, in the eastern of Sicily, um, has shown some pretty bad images. Uh, the airport has been shut down for a few hours over the weekend. Uh, the fire has reached um, bathing establishment on the beach of Catania and people were forced to um, evacuate. Um, so there's about still um, 11 or 10, 11 uh, active uh, main wildfires. Hmm. Um, Sicilian government has requested uh, the help of the national government because it's unable to face um, the issue with its own resources. Okay. I'm talking about, about 30, 30 to 40 additional firefighters and civil protection department squad that have been sent from northern Italy regions. Um, so. Okay, it sounds like that's a quite a critical situation there indeed. Uh, Jacopo Lentini, a journalist in Palermo, thank you very much. No worries. Would you like, would you like me to provide you with some more um, um, in-depth information? Thank you for now. Thank you for now. We'll come back to you perhaps later. Thank you very much, Jacopo.
Now, let's try to put all this in context. We've got Professor Mojib Latif, a meteorologist at the Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research with us. He's an author of best-selling climate change books, including Two uh, Hot Times. Uh, thank you for being with us, Professor. First of all, what do you make of these extreme, these multiple extreme weather events that are happening around the same time? Can you explain it? Yeah, I mean, what we are seeing now is that uh, we are slowly leaving the climatic comfort zone. Um, we have been in a relatively stable climate for many millennia. However, uh, due to global warming, due to anthropogenic, so man-made global warming, we are losing, uh, we are leaving this comfort zone and uh, we are seeing uh, extreme weather all around the world, could be heat waves, uh, could be uh, uh, extreme rainfall uh, with uh, uh, extreme flooding. And, uh, you know, there is a kind of invisible hand and this is global warming, which uh, comes in different flavors. And uh, yeah, so we have warned uh, for many years uh, that this can happen and now we are seeing that it is happening. We've just been showing some images of the fires that have been raging in southern Europe. Of course, there's also been massive flooding in Europe and in China, elsewhere as well. Is climate change happening faster than expected? No, not, not really. If we uh, go back uh, 30 years ago, uh, when the first uh, simulations were made, regarding the influence of carbon dioxide uh, on the Earth's climate, then uh, the climate basically followed what we have predicted uh, uh, decades ago. Mm. And so this is exactly what we anticipated and we don't really see a sign that we have underestimated uh, the, climate, the climatic evolution. It's mm. right on and uh, unfortunately, uh, the political leaders uh, didn't really listen to our warnings and this is now the consequences that we see. I wanted to ask you about that because uh, we're here in Europe where the EU seems to be trying to show some leadership in tackling climate change, but this is a truly global challenge. Are the EU and governments around the world doing what's necessary to save the planet? No, not really. Uh, they put out plans, they define goals, but they don't act. Let me give you just one number. Uh, since 1990, uh, the global carbon dioxide emissions increased by 60 percent, six zero. And uh, even this year, 2021, uh, we expect that carbon dioxide emissions will rise again after the decline last year due to the uh, corona lockdown. And this shows that uh, the political leaders uh, do not really implement what is necessary and what is necessary are system systemic changes. Okay, so we have basically uh, get away worldwide from the fossil fuels uh, uh, towards the renewable energies. And uh, this is simply not happening fast enough and uh, we have to work on this. Professor Latif, thank you very much. That was Professor Mojib Latif, climate scientist at the Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research in Kiel. Thank you. You're welcome.